Let's talk about underdog fantasy. Underdog fantasy is the best and easiest place to play fantasy football for big cash prizes. An underdog fantasy you just draft. No need to worry about waivers, lineups, or injuries. Underdog handles it all for you. Go to underdogfantasy.com or download the app, draft a season-long best ball team, and that's it. No in-season management. They're going to give you $25 when you sign up so you can take a free shot at a $1 million grand prize in their fantasy football tournament. That's right. You can get a free $25 in bonus cash on underdog fantasy if you use the code KIME, K-E-I-M, when you make your first deposit. I love underdog because it's just so easy to use. The mobile app is slick. The website is user-friendly. So do what I've been doing. Go to underdogfantasy.com, join a league, draft a team, and that's it. You're good for the season. Remember, go to underdogfantasy.com, the App Store, or the Google Play Store, sign up with the code KIME, K-E-I-M, and get a free $25 in bonus cash. Empire. Hello and welcome to my podcast. Today, another quick practice report update. It's August 4th and I've already lost track of the days out here. For the longest time, I thought it was Tuesday. That's what happens this month. Also, a shout out to those of you who signed up to play with me in a fantasy football league on Underdog Fantasy. I'll be hosting more of those throughout the month, so pay attention to that on social media. It's an easy sign up and really easy to draft. I enjoyed that experience. There's also no maintenance during the season, so it's really painless. We played in the $3 league to keep it fun. Look for more opportunities throughout this month. Finally, look for my story on Landon Collins soon on ESPN.com. It'll be out there again soon. I'll just say he looks good this summer. Now let's get to today. In the first couple days of training camp, there were times I wondered about running back Antonio Gibson and his toe. He said in the spring it wasn't yet 100%, and because of that, there were times you'd look to see how he was running or walking and wondering if early in camp he was moving that way because of his toe or because of his natural, what was going on. He also wasn't that visible in the first couple of days. Again, are they resting him at all, you know, just to give him to help that toe? What's the deal? The answer has been no, they're not resting him. He hasn't missed a day. If you want to wonder about his toe, go by the proof. He hasn't missed a day. He hasn't sat out any series. The best sign of of all that suggests he's okay. And today, he looked pretty good. On one run, he burst around left end, and I'll guess he would have gained about 15 yards, maybe more. Another time, he showed good patience on a run around the right end. Might have been a five-yard game, but it was due to his patience. Looked good in some short yardage drills. On one carry, ran right to his right side. Jamin Davis hit him from the side. He would have broken that tackle because of his head of steam and the angle Davis took. Not a knock on Davis. It's just about Gibson and the way the play was blocked. When you watch him run pass routes, he's putting his toe in the ground and cutting. So when I when you look at him, it's like, I don't see the ill effects. And, and maybe I'm just not smart enough to see it. But again, the proof is they don't rest him. And he's been active in the pass game, running routes from different spots, catching passes over the middle. I don't know yet how big a role he'll have in this area. It'll be more than last year. J.D. McKissick is really good as a third down back, but the more Gibson can handle in this role, the better off the offense will be. It expands a playbook with him in the game. More options. The reason he didn't do it more last year, it wasn't because they didn't feel he could handle it. It's because they wanted him to focus just on running back, learn that position. And in fact, he said the other day that he's still adjusting more to running back than running routes as a running back. Now, he'll have to get used to protection. I talked about some of his protections yesterday on the podcast, so go back and give that a listen. Tight end to Merrick Hemingway has done a nice job this summer. I had heard from people here during the spring that he intrigued them. So when I made my 50, initial 53-man roster, I did not put him on there, but he was the last. I went back and forth between he and Ricky Seals-Jones because, you know, you hear that they like guys and they end up being cut. But I know you, they liked him, and he's done a nice job. This group had him in Carolina and liked him. Hemingway has been active as a pass catcher, but they also like him in a move role as a blocker. And that's important because I don't think that's not something when I will, I'll just say this, when I watched him today, he definitely held his own in that area, keeping his guy, usually a safety, maybe a linebacker out of the play. 
He and rookie John Bates are, Bates are nice compliments to one another because Bates is a much better blocker in line, so it gives him something, someone adept at both to pair with Logan Thomas. If that is, Hemingway continues this play and makes a 53-man roster. Keep in mind, they also like to use those tight ends, that third tight end, as basically a fullback, so that they, you need a guy who can move like that, and Hemingway gives them that ability, and it's an area that Bates need, needs to keep working on. Another Nate Katzer comment today. Again, they do special teams before practice. He got on the scout team coverage unit telling them, you guys on the scout team, hustle, hustle your ass to the coach. We don't have all day. Special teams coaches don't get much time and must maximize. Katzer is pretty intense about it, but I think that's a good thing. Hey, folks, would you like free tickets for the preseason game against the Baltimore Ravens? Well, you're in luck because our sponsor, Prosper Insurance, is giving a ticket to anyone who gets a home and auto quote with them. You don't even have to buy a policy to get the free ticket, although the savings will absolutely make you want to switch today. Finding the right insurance can be a pain, but Prosper makes the process easy, all while providing great service and advice. Their licensed advisors shop the market with top companies like Allstate, Nationwide, Progressive, Travelers, and more to find you the perfect coverage at a great rate, which is just a few of the many reasons why Prosper has over 1,000 five-star reviews on Google. You have nothing to lose. Simply visit prosper.insurance slash time to get your quote and a free ticket to the Baltimore preseason game on August 28th. That's prosper.insurance slash kime, K-E-I-M, no dot com. Get ready to feel good about your insurance. After practice, quarterback Ryan Fitzpatrick and receiver Adam Humphrey stayed a little bit longer to work out a particular play. It appeared that Fitzpatrick was talking to him about a route in which, based on the linebacker look or the way he was set, the slot would have to adjust his route. I could see Fitz motion, motioning with his hands to provide an example. So it looked like in one look, the slot runs basically a crosser. Another look, they just basically slide off the line and Fitz hits him. That's what they did when they were working on it. Stuff like that that has endeared Fitzpatrick to his teammates, his knowledge and his ability to, you know, his not just ability, but how he can talk to them and work through things like that and work on it. You see that all the time. He continues to look better than Heineke. It really isn't a competition. In the first and 11, 11, 11 on 11 work, Fitzpatrick made a nice throw. He looked left threw back and a deep out to the right side to rookie Deami Brown. Just a good throw. Had another nice throw to tight end Logan Thomas, just over Cole Holcomb's head. The coverage wasn't bad, but this is Thomas's strength. He's big and such a good target because of it. He doesn't need a lot of separation to make a play, and that was evident last year, and it still remains the case. One of the benefits of the officials being at practice yesterday and today is that it will help players such as rookie Benjamin St. Juice adjust with his hands. St. Juice was called for a penalty in a one-on-one -on -one drill against receiver Kelvin Harmon because he was too handsy down the field, grabbing him high at the pads. It's been an issue. He also had a nice coverage against Brown in a team drill, showed excellent leverage, used his eyes to read Brown, anticipate the ball, broke it up, and he used his hands well. What he'll learn, too, is that you can't be handsy up around the shoulder pads as he was on the Harmon play. They'll call that all the time. You need to get your hands way away from the official's view. When you talk to veteran corners, they'll talk about sliding it around their hip, the hip area, somewhere like that. But that's something he'll have to adjust to. I told you early on that I was high on defensive end James, with James Smith Williams. I think he'll be a solid backup for them as a third defensive end and someone who can slide inside in certain packages. I love how he plays with power. Ron Rivera basically all but said he'd be on the 53-man roster because he talked about using him in various situations during the season. That shouldn't be a surprise because he's a good bit ahead of those fighting for the fourth end spot. Casey Tuhill, William Bradley King, Shaka Tony. I see each of them having something they can offer, and if Bradley King and Tony show anything as pass rushers, it's hard to cut them. I think Tuhill's size gives him a little bit of an edge, but I don't think the gap is all that big. Stephen Sims told us that he's feeling like his old self with no toe or foot issues like he had last year. I love the way he finished in 2019, but did not see that same player last year for a variety of reasons. Rivera said it took him a minute to learn the offense, and that was a knock on him his first year here, as were the trusting his hands, and you saw that last year as well. It's why it took him a bit as a rookie to get on the field, despite obvious skills. But I've always liked him, and having 
and he's having a better camp than a year ago. I don't know if it'll be enough, but his quickness is there. He dusted safety Cole Luke on one route over the middle, drawing oohs and o's from the offensive players. I also saw Sims get Jimmy Moreland at the line in a one-on-one drill. Using quick feet, got Moreland leaning outside, took him up the seam, and then cut inside for about five yards of separation. That's what he did at the end of 2019. What he's also doing now is he's catching, he said he's catching 200 passes after every practice. He said he was doing that last year, but it kind of he kind of got away from it. He's doing it all the time now. So we'll see what happens. I've seen him have a couple drops out here. I had one the other day, but we'll see. I still think he has something to offer some team. Saw Peyton Barber with a nice route against Jamin Davis in the one-on-ones. When I watched Barber run this route yesterday, went back and watched the tape of it because I videotape it, watched the tape. He, when he was running wide, when he's running wide, then cutting back inside. And that route yesterday, I did not like the way he used his head. It was He was trying to sell a fake. It was way too obvious to tell he was going to go back inside because he turned his head outside way too early, and it was just an obvious fake. Today, he kept his head still. Davis bit head outside. Barber cuts inside. A good, a good um, adjustment from what he had shown the day before. I like rookie Jarrett Patterson as a guy they can develop. I still think it would be hard to see him making the 53-man roster. I like him. I think he's, he, I like the way he catches the ball. I think he's feisty. He's got the want to. I like guys like that. Lamar, Lamar Miller has looked good in camp, to, you know, for whatever that's worth. But I'm going to provide this warning. So please don't take this more than just, hey, he's, he's off to, seemingly off to a decent start. I never really jump to big conclusions about backs until we see them in a game. If you remember Larry Johnson, the former Chiefs running back, when he was here way back when, early 2000s, everyone raved about how good he looked in camp. Then the game started. He averaged like two yards of carry. Don't go overboard on backs until the games begin. And then for the Dax Milne crowd, I swear, every time I watch him, he either blocks or runs some sort of bubble router screen. I want to see the kid catch the ball. Then when I don't look, he catches a pass. But I can tell you, I think he's a really good blocker. It's something I liked on film from his BYU days, and I've seen it when he's going in full team drills. That's something that will catch the coach's eyes. I still think he's more of a practice squad guy. When you look at this roster, other guys have jumped out more at the position. I think Gandy Golden and Kelvin Harmon have jumped out a little bit more. I think they offer some things that can help right now. I think Dax Millman is a guy that you'd like to keep around and develop. Guys like he and Jarrett Patterson, that I think these are guys that you can develop into bigger roles the following year. Adam Humphreys is on a one-year deal. If he doesn't play well, or excuse me, if he if he plays well and they can't, they don't want to keep him because Milma has developed. Well, now you got your guy. And the same thing with Patterson and JD McKissick. I think there's a big difference between JD McKissick and Patterson right now. See where it is in a year from now. Is it worth whatever they'd have to pay McKissick or a Humphreys? Then you know, and so that's how you develop your own and replace your own in that situation, allowing you to then keep more expensive guys along at other positions. So we'll see, but I think he's, he's done good in that area. And again, with Patterson, same thing, but I do think like, you know, the guys are behind Adam Humphreys, Jer- excuse me, Adam Humphreys, JD McKissick, they are definitely far ahead of where those two guys are. Hey, this is Joel Corey from inside the cap. I know you're enjoying the John Conn report, which gives you insider access to the Washington football team. Everything you want you want to know which is going on with the Washington football team. Once you're done with that, check out my podcast, Inside the Cap, which gives you the ins and outs of the NFL salary cap and player contract negotiations. Check out these two products and other fine podcasts from Empire Media. Anyway, that's it for me. Told you to be quick. I'll be back with another quick episode on Thursday. Thanks for tuning in. Talk to you next time.